Okay, so now we're going to talk about Dalton's law of partial pressures. Now, so far, all the laws that we have discussed involves only one gas, right? So when we're talking about Boyle's law, we're talking about the relationship between the pressure and volume for a gas. The same is true for Charles and the same is true for Gay Lussac's law. However, in Dalton's law of partial pressures, we're talking about a mixture of gases. And the first thing we need to recognize is that if you have a gas in a mixture, then the pressure exerted by each gas will be independent of the pressure exerted by the other gases present. So therefore, based on that, we can say that the total pressure of a mixture of gases will be equal to the sum of the individual pressures of the gases in a mixture. So that is basically what Dalton's um, law is saying. Dalton law, Dalton's law says that the total pressure of a mixture of gases is the sum of the partial pressures exerted by each of the gases in the mixture. All right. So that's it. That's basically what Dalton's law is all about. So we can use that law to solve a problem like this. This question says a container contains helium at 0 0.50 atmospheres, neon at 0 0.60 atmospheres, and argon at 1.30 atmospheres. What is the total pressure? <clears throat> Very easy. The total pressure is given by PT equals to 0 0.50 atmospheres plus 0 0.60 atmospheres plus 1.30 atmospheres and that's it all you have to do is add these up and the answer is 2.40 atmospheres all right very simple okay so um, actually um, that's the answer right there okay so um, we can apply Boyle's law or I should say Dalton's law to a situation um, where we have a gas being produced and we um, try to collect that gas over water now this setup will only work for gases where the gas is not soluble in water so for example you can use it to collect gases such as oxygen or nitrogen those gases are not very soluble in water you know other hydrocarbon gases like methane and so on so basically this is the setup um, you have a trough filled with water you have a jar which is inverted in the water in the trough and um, I should say here that initially the jar here will be completely filled with um, water we have the gas generated from a reaction vessel and it is led through this hose into the jar and eventually what's going to happen is that the oxygen or the gas whatever the gas is accumulates above the surface of the water and as the amount of water increases it pushes the water down and basically that's how you can um, collect your gas so very easy setup basically and you can actually determine the pressure of the gas because going back to this diagram you'll notice it says here that what is collected above the gas or above the water here will not only be oxygen but you'll also have water vapor right because whenever you have any liquid just above the surface of the liquid you're going to have vapor of that liquid so this is actually a mixture of two gases oxygen and water vapor so um, what we normally do is that we try to collect the amount of gas present so that the atmospheric pressure is equal to the pressure of the gas inside the container now the pressure of the gas collected will be equal to the pressure of the water vapor plus the pressure of the gas and therefore we can represent it using this equation here now if we know what the water vapor pressure is which we can because there are tables available which will give us the vapor pressure of water at different temperatures and if we know what the current atmospheric pressure is then we can easily find the pressure of the gas collected above the water so let me go to this next slide so for example if you're given a question like this a sample of oxygen was collected in a bottle over water at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius when the atmospheric pressure is 760 torr what is the partial pressure of the oxygen and it gives you that the vapor pressure of water is 23.8 torr 
So it's very simple. You need to remember what we just said. And that is that the atmospheric pressure will be equal to the vapor pressure at the temperature plus the pressure of the oxygen collected. So the pressure of the oxygen collected will be equal to the atmospheric pressure minus the vapor pressure. And we just work the numbers out. So you're going to have 764 minus 23.8 tor and whatever that gives that would be the answer so 760 minus 23.8 so according to my calculation this works out to be 736 tor and that's it okay so that's an application of Dalton's law of partial pressures okay Here's another law by Gay Lussac. This time it's the law of combining volumes. And basically, what this law says is that when measured at the same temperature and pressure, the ratio of the volumes of reacting gases are small whole number ratios. Alright? So, for example, if you have the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia, right? And this is the balanced equation, what you'll find is that the ratio of the volumes, let me go back to the pointer mode. The ratio of the volumes will parallel the mole ratios given by the coefficients in the balanced equation. So basically you can interpret this equation to say one volume of nitrogen, one volume unit of nitrogen, plus three volume units of hydrogen will give two volume units of ammonia. Now what you need to remember is this line right here where it says the gases are measured at the same temperature and the same pressure. All right. So in order for this relationship between the volumes of the reactants and products um, to hold true, the temperature of all the gases and the pressure of all the gases must be the same. All right. So we can establish volume ratios, which would be basically the same thing as the mole ratios. The volume ratios, for example, between the hydrogen and nitrogen would be three to one, as indicated in the coefficients. Um, the volume ratios between ammonia and Hydrogen would be 2 to 3, again, as indicated by the mole ratios of the coefficients. And the volume ratio between ammonia and hydrogen or nitrogen would be 2 to 1. All right. So um, here's another example. The reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to form water vapor. Again, the mole ratios would be the same as the volume ratios as long as the temperatures and the pressures of all the gases are the same. All right. Okay, the next law, Avogadro's law, which says that equal volumes of different gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. All right, so basically, what they're saying is that if you have two gases at the same temperature and pressure, the number of molecules in each would be the same, and therefore, we can establish molecule ratios, mole ratios, and volume ratios based on the balanced equations for the reaction so in this example um, the reaction is between hydrogen and chlorine so therefore the equation is let me go up here h2 plus cl2 to give 2 hcl and that's the equation for the reaction so as you can see from the coefficients the mole ratio will be 1 to 1 to 2 same thing as the volume ratios, same thing as the molecule ratios. All right? So, um, so that's the equation, and those are the relationships. All right. So, um, we're going to stop here, and then we're going to look at some stoichiometric relationships when it comes to gases and um, chemical reactions. All right? Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.